I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master, and this is Dragons of War. We rejoin the party after Pesci and Katla have uh, laggered behind with the wagon in order to bring some workers and wagons and equipment to try and haul away the large piece of the meteorite that has fallen and Gorakul seems very um almost obsessed with with keeping it under you know control of the party and not not letting it out of your guys' sight and so in order to speed up the reunion and not leave Gorakul and Scout completely uh, alone in the wilderness, uh, they trusted Katla and Pesci and the workers to be able to handle the last, you know, leg of the journey with the cart. And the rest of the party sped along to um, reunite with Gorakul and Scout. When they got back, the campsite had been wrecked gorakul and scout were you know in hiding and they had to fight off some guard drakes green guard drakes to be precise who had set their sights on their sanctuary in order to secure their supper and so uh the party fought a very um tough battle with the guard drakes rested for the for the evening and then um realized that uh the wagon should have been here by now and the fact that it wasn't was starting to worry them and so they set off 
in order to ascertain what had become of their companions. And not far up the road, you discover an overturned wagon. The, the very wagon you guys were, were requisitioning in order to bring it here. No sign of any of the workers. No sign of Pesci or Katla. You guys uh, are a distance from the cart right now. And I will pull up the map and you can tell me what you do. Okay. Uh, he's pulling it up. Yes, sir. One second. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, so, um, you know, I put you guys in the position, assuming that you guys would go and invest, investigate uh, the wagon. However, I am going to turn off uh, token locking mode, and you guys are free to position your characters however you wish, uh, going as far back, you know, as you want on the road. Um, so if only one or two or however many of you want to approach the wagon, if you all want to approach the wagon, you can just, you know, change your position to whatever it would be. Um, or if some of you want to stay back, feel free to move yourselves further back along the road. This is your opportunity to set the scene for where you guys are at. And then I will describe to you what happens from there. Mm. Um, not to, not to get ourselves ahead here but uh i see uh pesci's um icon yes yeah uh, no you do not see pesci and i will actually remove katla um it the token is on the map that he can see otherwise he can't see okay gotcha okay so um i would recommend then that let me take LED here Oh, it's probably like around here. I assume that's some. Oh, wait, elevation. no, no, that's uh, that's a, a rock thing. And when I said further back along the road, I meant uh, back to the right. Oh, oh I so, see. sorry about that. Yeah, you guys are yeah, you yeah. guys are coming from the east heading west. Gotcha. <clears throat> Tanya, where do you want to be? Lucy, where do you want to be? So. Also, Scout, are are you with us? Here. Okay. I just uh, wanted to make sure you were hearing that too, in case you wanted to reposition. The kids are are in the house, so yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm up by the um, yeah. Uh, so Zarish is up by the the wagon here, trying to figure out what's going on. Elodie's lingering a little bit farther behind. Mm -hmm. I've got a question. Yes. Are we? Can we? Um, oh. investigate or discern? We, or... we can, but we're starting in a position. So first you got to put yourself in a position. Yep. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, so, so whoever is, is investigating the wagon needs to be by it. And then everybody else, you know, get in your positions. Uh, Elodie, I, I need you to decide if you want to be up or down because you're in two squares right now. Oh, okay. I'll be up. Okay. okay um, thank you. Who's best at who? Who good at investigation? Because I'm not. Well, again, I'm I'm thinking that if there's a threat, this should be, you know, it's your choice. I mean, I'm I'm up front. Elodie's in the back. Okay. Uh, Sarah. Parrish is in the front. And scout. The scouts in the front as well right now. Yep. And okay, so this is good. I think we're okay. Good. Start. All right. All right. So, uh. Lucy, are you the one investigating the wagon then since you're right next to it? Okay, I'm investigating the wagon. Are you All sure right. you want Scout to do it? <laughs> no, you're investigating the wagon. That's fine. I'm investigating the wagon. I'm investigating the area around it. Um, well, you don't need to roll for that because uh, there's there's nothing to closely investigate where you are. You can roll perception to see if you notice anything. Yeah, I'm going to do perception. That's what I mean. And, um, should I be rolling? 
Investigation, yes. Yeah, you're looking around, Gorakul. It looks like a rather sunny day here in Green Yord as you guys are, you know, heading up the road. It's it's not, uh, um, you know, any signs of danger or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Elodie, uh, you know, pretty much the, the same thing. And then Lucy, as you're investigating the wagon, uh, you see... Uh, a couple of things, you know, first of all, um, the wagon does not appear to be, uh, very damaged as if it crashed. It appears as if it was like turned over. Um, so that's, that's the first thing that you really notice. The second thing, uh, that you notice is that, um, a lot of the stuff in here has been ransacked. And although, like, the animal feed and stuff like that has uh, been left behind, like, pretty much anything else of value, um, you know, anything metal or or tools, um, just everything has been taken. And so, clearly, this was some kind of robbery, uh, you know, whatever whatever attacked the wagon wanted what was inside and it's right at that moment as you come back out of the wagon you know and and say what you found that you hear a high-pitched yipping in uh draconic okay and Goracles, sir, hears this, knows that stumbles to himself, of course, it's the kobolds. You think there's more kobolds? Okay. Count draws his bow, knocks an arrow. Oh. Um. And suddenly, uh, you see a rather large kobold with a set of makeshift uh wings that that appear to be like you know a wooden construct with with leather uh between them appears up on the cliff and all the other uh kobolds begin to pour out of their hiding spots to attack you so go ahead okay. and roll initiative. Yay, that'll be interesting. Okay. DM, I'm assuming that I am still not in this. Yes. Uh you you um some something is going on with you that that the other party members are not aware of yet. So uh I will reveal that at the appropriate time and then uh you will be free to act. Gotcha. Thank I you. see the dice rolling system is still working in our favor. Yeah. All right. So Zarash, your warrior instincts kick in, and you're able to react before uh, the rest uh, of the kobolds go. Um, as they pour out of their hiding spots. You see a couple of them were were lying in ambush, you know, right near you. Uh and and were about to jump out and try stabbing you guys. So what do okay. you do? Hmm. Well Might as well swing at something. Um because that's what I do. So I got uh yeah. Might as well swing a faultless longsword at this cobalt and see what I can do to get rid of it. Yeah. So you, um, you know, take yeah. your your longsword and swing at the cobalt. However, as more and more cobalts begin to appear out of their hiding spots, you're a, a bit distracted by how many there are, and you Literally. miss the nimble draconic creature. No, uh, great start. Great start to the round of battle. Okay. 
Lucy's up. Okay. Um, so there, I, I was thinking maybe I could use uh, Rain of Thorns, but I don't know if they're too close or. They are not too close. <laughs> Although the kobold behind the wagon has cover from you. Is Rain of Thorns something that's got um, range to it? I assume it does? Yes. I would get that winged. Let's see if you can get that winged kobold there. The winged kobold is up on a cliff, and although you heard him and can like see his his general you know shape and all of that, the angle of the cliff prevents you from being able to target him efficiently with anything. With Rain of Thorns, can you only target one at a time? Uh, I'm looking right now. I'm looking at Cobalt 5 and Cobalt. Okay, so Hail of Thorns is a bonus action that you cast on yourself, and the next time you hit a creature with a ranged weapon, uh, it creates a Rain of Thorns. Um, in addition to the normal effect of the attack, uh, the target of the attack and each creature within five feet of it must make a dexterity saving throw or take an additional 1d10 piercing damage uh, or half as much on a fail. And so um, basically what it comes down to is if you were to attack um, the group of three there, you could you could force two other kobolds to have to, um, you know, take damage. And if you attack Kobold 5, then you would be forcing 2. So the optimal attack is against uh, any of the three in the in the bunch down there. Um, and then the second most optimal attack is against the group of 2. Okay. I would go against the 2 right now. Now the question is, you throw it... Can, so can you throw Hail, Hail of Thorns and... So what happens, oh, okay, I'm sorry, uh, what happens is you cast Hail of Thorns on yourself, and that basically turns your ammunition into, like, a shotgun blast. And okay. and so uh, all you do is, under Hail of Thorns, where it says cast, uh, oh wait, no, not cast, um, under Hail of Thorns, where it says uh, uh, self, um the the effect c self yep okay so then now uh your your damage will add the extra uh d10 um but uh first you need to um now target the kobold that you're attacking and roll your longbow attack normally so you want to go for well, go for six go for it so control yeah hold on to the control button and hold down that yeah yep. all right now you gotta go back here let me go hit the little attacking thing here yeah, for right see where the swords are swords keep going now oh, here yeah. there let me take a look at yeah combat tracker okay so you are cobalt six oh yeah. nope oh, now you you're know. not targeting him one more time there you go okay now you get to roll. Go over to your actions. Yep. Yep. The longbow. Yep. Longbow. It's longbow. Yep. Grab that. Over here. Take twenty. Ah. It's still okay. a hit. You strike the kobold. Now, um, the next thing you do is target the other two guys as well. Okay. okay. And now um roll the uh cast uh next to Hail of Thorns, the dice, the um, the yeah, first yeah. button. First button? Yeah. Yep. Did I do it? Yeah, you did. You did. Uh so now uh Oh, it's the same thing either way. Two fails and a success. All right. So uh, now you roll the damage, the little blood mark right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah. All right. So uh, 
two of them die outright. Your your oh your yeah. your your little barbs rip through their tiny dragon like bodies and they drop to the ground just dying instantly. And the third one is so wounded that he can no longer take reactions. He doesn't get an attack of opportunity against anyone. Uh, but fortunately for you, the third one is the one that you hit with your um, with, with your arrow. So you still have to roll your 1d8 plus 4 damage against him. Again. For, the air, for the air, for the arrow, not the nope, not the, not Hold the on. damage from the from the hail of thorns that you just did, up by the longbow where your damage is. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did the right thing. Yes. And so, as your arrow sinks, you know, into wow. into the kobold and blasts the thorns into his companions, uh, he he grabs at his chest where the arrow punctured and drops to the ground. That was a yeah. pretty effective attack there. Well done. All right now you can end your turn and let's see what the winged elbow does. Yep. You guys should have been yeah, using well. the shotgun the whole time. Little yeah. Down, little down the thing, bottom left of the attack. Okay, yep. Did it. yep. Yep, okay. All right, so sensing that uh, you're a pretty serious threat here, the kobold leader uh, is going to drop a rock on your head. Do you have a, does you have a dexterity save or anything like that? Nope. He just, it's an attack, so he just, you know, he, he either hits or misses, and, and he okay. hit. So uh, you're you're wounded as, as the kobold chucks a fist-sized rock at you and it and it hits you in the shoulder but uh you don't break your concentration and you're able to maintain your uh hail of thorns rain of thorns um so the next time you attack it'll still have the thorn effect take it off And then this kobold, this little kobold went to market, is hiding behind cover, so he is going to use his sling on Zarash. Oh, thanks. And he has advantage thanks to pack tactics. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, all of these kobolds are wearing weird-looking glasses that seem to cling to their face. Huh. He strikes you with the rock. It deals four damage. You're wounded, but not terribly. It, you know, it, it's a rock hitting you. You're a big bugbear. You can take it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I move up here and stab Lucy. Oh, no. Ew. That's not good. You easily pass your concentration check to maintain your hail of thorns, but you are badly wounded as the kobolds a uh, rough-hewn dagger slices a nasty cut on you. Hey. Ow. Ow. As I sort of see all this mess going around, I say, what in the world have you brought in your... What in the world gone around here? And he's going to say this in Draconic. Okay. And also, DM, does does Oracle recognize any of the kobolds? Why would you? Just because you were in a diplomacy mission with them, remember? You you spoke to some of them a few days ago, like 
why why would you remember their faces so well as to be able to recognize them there but are they are these kobolds from the same ones that they they look like the same type of kobolds yes and he just sort of says in draconic hold it hold it everyone stop and he's going to do a persuasion roll Okay. All right. Not 20. So, yes, but remember that there is no such thing as, you know, a guaranteed success just because of what you want to happen when it comes to these kinds of things. <laughs> if if you if you tell the king that you want him to name you as your heir and you roll a nat 20, you're not the prince of the kingdom. Okay. So then there's like, there's uh, there's not there's not a five percent chance that you're gonna get the king to just hand over his kingdom, you know. It so it sounds like there's a five percent chance of the uh, of these uh, draconic uh, language uh, thing right. here. Well now I I want to be clear, it's not that it didn't work. It just didn't work the way that I'm sure you pictured it in your head, you know. Everybody doesn't just stop and and be like, oh, well, by all means, tell us what you'd like us to do. Instead, what happens is the winged kobold yells back at you. And what does he yell? He's writing it. Huh. I understand that completely, do you? I do. What is it? We take no orders from Biggs. Huh. I'm... And Gora Cole, speaking tonic to the winged kobold, says, I'm trying to understand why you... Why you, you folks are... are trying to raid this place. Are you trying to find some food or something? Well, yes. Uh, so, so you you are trying to use you know diplomacy with the with the kobolds. It might or might not work, but uh, you're gonna have to wait until the winged kobolds turn to find out. Yeah. Uh, kobold seven, however, does continue to attack because he has received no orders otherwise. And Zarash, you managed to get out of the way of the sling as he throws his rock at you. This kobold tries to stab you and has advantage Wait, thanks to pack tactics. Oh, I forgot that other guy had advantage too. Hold on. Okay, he missed anyway. All right, now this guy. Okay. Uh, he manages to stab you, but the damage is not great. Okay, um, so LED is going to take out uh, a the crossbow there. I thought she would also try and help with the diplomacy. Hell no, <laughs> these guys, these guys are these guys are bad. Um, no, do you think a spell would be better, DM, or is it is this a? Oh, for sure. Okay, so I should be going for um, frostbite. Yeah, frostbite is probably going to be your best, uh, you know, attack right now. And do I have? I've got enough range where I could go after the wing kobold. Or one you of the can go after the wing kobold with frostbite because, unlike a regular ranged attack, you're casting a spell on him. So you just need to be able to like discern where he is. You don't have to have a clear, clear line of sight to him. Gotcha. Okay. So by casting, I just hit the button that says cast next yes. to it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Unfortunately, he makes his saving throw and takes no damage as your icy uh, spell forms around him. It's almost as if he has some kind of protective item on. Okay. All right. Scout's, scout. Scout's going after the the winged kobold. All right. So if you're making a ranged attack against him, it yes. it uh, is going to be at <laughs> at negative five because he has cover because of the cliff. Oh, here I thought he was flying. No, that's disappointing. I know. Yeah. I see how you are, DM. <laughs> yeah. He readjusts. He'll go for five. Okay, five yeah. is yeah, yeah. You're good. Yeah. I thought I thought maybe it was the one yeah. behind the wagon, and I was gonna have to be like, oh no. man, he's got cover too. <laughs> yeah, let's get a better angle shot. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. Now you're not even like firing into melee at all, so. <laughs> Good though. Pressing, out fine. pressing up against the cliff so that you can't be targeted so easily by the kobolds above. You loose your short bow arrow into the kobold. Dropping him instantly. Okay. Nice. And then I'm going to toss rocks at you. This is not, you know, flinging cows off the top of the castle. Shouldn't Pesci be fighting off the cobalt? Near well, you don't know where Pesci is yet. Hold on. Yeah, we'll 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 know what's going on with him shortly. All right, so uh, Zarash, you get hit with another rock, and although the damage is still not great, like it's starting to add up a little bit. Mm. Pesci, I want you to roll a dexterity check. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me check your skills because it actually might be better for you to roll acrobatics instead. Oh, that's, I want to see this. Yeah, that may be better. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Pesci. The one man show goes off. <laughs> Pesci, you strain against your bindings and manage to wriggle your hands free and untie your legs you stand up and, and um are beneath uh the tree you remove the gag from your mouth and are free to speak and this will be your your spot in initiative because you had to free yourself okay um Oh, by so the way, you used your action to escape, so you can move, okay. but that's it. Oh, or, or bonus action, of course, you know. Bonus action. I don't have much I can do for bonus action, but these kobolds still think that I am tied up, correct? Yes, yes. They left you securely bound and gagged and, you know, tressed and hogtied, and um, they pulled your pants down and you know, wrote on your butt with magic marker, the full hazing ritual. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20. Five. Okay. Well, I don't really want to move too much because, well, uh, okay. So I can't stealth right now. Uh, you um, could. Oh, I could. Okay. You, you, you can stealth when you move it. it. You have to move at half speed. Okay. So this winged cobalt that's over... Unless the, um, unless you can move... Uh, I'm sorry. You can move at full speed while stealthing, but then it's at disadvantage. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this winged cobalt, that's the guy who... What? Um, leads everybody? Yeah. As far as he, I can tell? He was the one who told him to write on you. Okay. That jerk. All right. Is he, is he flying in midair? 
No, 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 he's not flying. Uh, don't be mistaken by the uh, the misnomer of his name. The wings that he has constructed look like something a child would construct before jumping off his roof and breaking his legs. Okay. Okay, cool. And do I see... Well, if I use Bardic Inspiration, that actually... I, I, I think I have to actually say something for this, right? Yeah, you... you 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 can't silently cast it, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So. Okay. I'm I'm reading through my actions really quick. So what I'd like to do. What can I do to get um. To get uh advantage on stealth? What can I just kind of like army crawl my way would that help at all to be quiet or because they're they're distracted right now by all the noise and stuff in front of them actually take a point of inspiration for thinking to army crawl and then spend that point of inspiration immediately on this and you can have advantage so essentially essentially what it is is although army crawling is not a hard and fast way to gain advantage on stealth, because you had the idea to army crawl, I'm going to grant you inspiration, which you can then use to gain advantage on this. Okay. Way. Okay. Or you can just keep your point and not roll at it at advantage, and you know, it's your choice what um, you do with it. You don't have to spend it. You get the point either way. So. Mm, I may sit on it. Uh, hey, yeah, <laughs> the fire. All right, let me see. If, uh, I'm trying, so I want to try to get a little closer to the leader. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. He looks like he's about 40, 40 away from me. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, you can always uh, target him and it'll tell you. <clears throat> Yeah, if if you ever well, want to know exactly like exactly me. how far you are, you you just uh their targets. Oh, let me pull up the list. Sorry, my turn's taking a little bit too long. Let me um It's okay. You, you guys are newer and and you know, we we understand that it takes a bit to, you know, fully all right. you know, understand what you all want to do and and you know, your your character's action all choices, right. etc. I think this location will put me within 30. For some reason, the system isn't allowing me to target him. Um, there you go. Uh, now I can target him. Great. Yeah, so this is the location I want to be. Um, and let me roll for stealth. Yep. And survey says I roll. It didn't show up. <laughs> awesome. I rolled very well. I rolled a 17. Ah, there you go. All right, so you no, roll a 16 on your stealth check. And that will be my turn. So let me finish. Cool. Zerish, one All of right. the kobolds near you was taken out by Scout's arrow, but the one who who stabbed you last is still there. There's a kobold hiding behind the wagon and a couple up on the cliff. Well, we're just going to get rid of the guy next to me at this point because, you know, I'm sick of him. Um, Zarish, kobold three, right? Yes, awesome. My faultless longsword, which faulted me last time, does better. Much better. You decapitate the kobold with a swing from your powerful bugbear warrior arms, and he drops, obviously, to the ground. Awesome. Lucy, I assume you want to use that uh, that hyperkinetic uh, arrow thing at the winged uh, kobold there if you can. Can you shoot from? I don't know if I can. Can I? You can shoot at the kobold up there. He does have cover, so it is at negative five. Um, are there any other targets that are... The one behind the wagon, but that's the same deal. 
I just go after the wing tall bulb at this point. See what happens. So, um, is there a way for me to move someplace where I have more protection before I do that? You could uh, get behind the wagon yourself on the other side. I'm injured, right? Yes. Um, do I need to get some care? Or am I okay moving? You can move. Yeah, you can move and shoot. Uh, can I move like this? Are you trying to kill the winged combo because he's attacking us? Yeah, move there. All right. I move there. Yep. And then okay. target. Okay. Let's roll. Got it. Yep. And then roll your regular attack with your longbow. Can you do the hail of thorns again or no? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but first, regular attack with the longbow. Okay. Okay, you hit. Uh, now regular damage with the longbow. Nice. Okay, so he already dropped a zero, but now uh, roll the um, save for the hail. Or the rain. Yeah, hail of thorns. And now the damage. No, no, not that one. No, no, no. One next to it. All right, the bloody thing. No, that's Sorry, I have a little yeah. thing. Oh, oh, okay. You're kind of small. All right, I just wanted to make sure that it was still uh, correct, but yeah. Um, so let me add this all up. Eight, fifteen. Yep, the kobold drops to the ground, uh, dead. Oh. And, um, is that your turn? I believe that's my turn. Yes. Oracle starts to this in horror and just says, looks to Lucian and says, What in the, in all of the seven countries are you trying to do? She's saving our ass. Calm yourself this there, little to... dragon. This is how we speak to Diplomatically to people. I feel only by one inch. What is Cobalt 8 saying? <laughs> they give up. They say they give up. Okay. So, what are you going to do? Uh, so, Goracle, so seeing that everyone has, that the, uh, the remaining Cobalts have calmed down, said, says in Draconic, listen, me and my friends are not in the mood to be raided right now, so if, we, if, you, if you can just go your way and we can just give you some, some, some scraps of food. Wait, 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 Gorkul, ask them, ask them where they got these glasses. The, the glasses, the weird glasses. Those are cobalt handiwork. That they're goggles cool. to block the sunlight so that their sunlight sensitivity doesn't uh, give them disadvantage constantly. Oh, I did not realize that. Okay. I love me. Oracle sort of says to the cobalts to just leave them be and then and he'll make sure to give them some some food. Why are you trying to do Reaching into your pack for some of your rations, you offer them to the kobolds. Yeah. While also trying to heal Lucy. Well, Ray, we don't have a lot of rations, so you might not want to give too many of them away. But I have enough. None of the rest of us do. Yes, I know. And he'd rather feed these kobolds than you guys. Yeah, isn't that nice of him? <laughs> that. It's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> we're, we're just goofing around with you. You're, you're trying diplomacy, and that's a very valid tactic. We'll see if it works. So reaching out uh, your hand, 
you say some words in magic that heal Lucy. You feel a warmth inside you as as the stab wound is no longer bleeding. Excellent. Mm-hmm. That's what Cobalt 7 does. Bet she's still going to throw rocks at me. Cobalt 7 runs as fast as he can uh, into the woods. Okay. Hmm. All right, I guess Elodie is going to... Um, I think I have... Um, I don't have any healing uh, things here, do I? No, I don't. No. So I'm just going to come over and join the group here, I guess. Um, What's that? Okay, but you realize that that's more than your max movement, so that's oh. a double move. Sorry, hold on, hold on. Well, uh, hold on. How about over near the cliff? So you're... Well, but I don't even know if anybody's going to attack me at this point. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I guess I'm under the impression at this point that Gorokul has calmed things down and everybody's running away, so I'm not really going to worry about... I'm just going to make a move and I'm going to notch a, um, an arrow here on my crossbow and I'm going to wait. It's called a bolt. It's called a bolt. I'm going to bolt my crossbow. Uh, yes, you're right. Sorry. Bolt. Looking out, looking out, you know, making sure that no one's attacking. Yes. Readying your crossbow and uh, cocking the string and setting the bolt, you are prepared for the kobolds to attack. If they do, you will instantly react and fire a shot at them. Exactly what you said. DM, will I be able to climb this rock face in that drawing? You'll be able to roll and see. Okay. What would you like? Uh, it's athletics. All all climb checks that are not like um, I don't know, like up a <laughs> up a, up a flight of stairs or something where you could maybe you know acrobatically you know leap from from stair to stair or something like that. Our athletics checks because you have to use your upper body strength and pull yourself up. You know. Yeah. So uh, no, you you <laughs> are are able to like get your hands set on the rocks and begin climbing, but your heavy Warforge body just keeps like causing your, your hands to rip the, the hand grips like loose and tumble back down. Not like tumble, like you fall on your butt, but you know, uh, kobold number two runs back over uh, by where he left Pesci and sees you there and is surprised um, and, and and freaks out and tries to stab you out of surprise. Oh, What's an no. eye hidden? Oh, yeah, here, let me roll. See now, technically, when when you say uh, that you're using stealth, that that's two different things. Okay, so um, I thought you meant only that you wish to move quietly. If you wanted to be hidden at the end, just make sure you say that because um, it's, like next time. It, it's it's very different to like stealth down a hallway quietly versus I want to remain hidden behind every like statue or pillar that i come across understood yeah i will be more specific thank you and, and you know it's not it's not a big deal obviously it's just you know for the purposes of like making sure that i know what your character is specifically doing you know understood okay so perception mm. And uh, I do believe you rolled higher than an 11. I'm going back to double check. Yep, 16. 16. Yeah. So 
uh, he actually does not see you and therefore does not freak out and does not stab you, but he does see that you are not where he left you and begins to look around for you, um, but does not find you because he mm. is bad at his job. <laughs> Ah, uh, Pesci. Well, he already so, messed up the tying him up part, and now he lost him completely. Another, Pesci? Another kobold to kill. We need a story. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll hear the story soon enough, I'm sure, about how how this wagon was attacked. All right, Pesci, what do you do? So right now you're hidden. He can't find you, you know, but it's likely that if you try to stealth away again, that he might see you. Yes. I don't have any weapons, do I, currently? Yeah, no, you don't have any of your, your weapons on you. Okay. All right, I got it. Um... And you said my character has, like, writing and whatever, like, was uh, disheveled and whatnot? Yes. So what he's going to happen is he's going to come out of where he's hiding, um, and his, uh, his pants are going to fall down. He's going to fall over and trip on his, on, like, well, he's going to perform the trip, but he's going to fall over and trip. His pants are going to be down, and, like, the writing's going to be all exposed and everything, and I'm casting Pasha's Hideous Laughter. Ah, okay. So um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and rule that um, he would have disadvantage on his save. Uh, so you click dis when you when you cast the save. Okay. Um, I'm trying to select Cobalt Two again. Are you again. are you having trouble here? There you go. Sometimes I am. Uh, it just seems like uh, you're struggling today. You're you're remembering to click on your token first, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, looks like now I'm selected. Of course he's struggling. His pants are going to fall down. He's going to trip and fall. That's a struggle. Yeah. Uh, the sh the struggle, struggle is real. The struggle is real. Oh, huh. Did you remember to click the disadvantage? Did not? Did it just not it work is, for that? It is clicked. Oh, just doesn't work It is for highlighted. That. Okay, yeah, it well, looks like uh, I'm having issues with the interface today. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll I'll try to restart this. Well, well, he failed anyway, so that okay, means so that now you apply the effect to him. Yes, apply the effects. And all capacity. all you guys hear is just this, you know, dreadful screeching laughter uh, that that um, has him just completely uh, rolling on the ground, unable to to do anything. That is my turn. As Pesci's on the ground, frantically trying to... Well, none of you are there, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> can't see you. Let me re I'm going to reload this so I can see maybe if that helps. Actually, I don't think it, it it's necessarily you, so um, just hold on. I want you to go ahead and uh, click on your token, and then control left click on the kobold. Now it looks like that's selected. Yep, there you go. Okay. Okay, now it looks like it's working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, so is there is there an indication that they are in fact that that eight is giving up or is? Oh that... yeah, yeah. Eight has like dropped his weapons and is like, you know, trying to trying to supplicate. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm. I think Scout has the right idea, which, which is we have to get up this ridge. Um, safer to go around it. I mean, is that 
Is there any difference in height there in your um, in this uh, ridge here? If I go off to the the um, east or west? Yeah, the um, east the east has a a very um, you know shorter uh, gap uh, over by where it's more shaded there, and then there's like a tree kind of falling up against it even. Um, yeah. whereas where you guys are, it's almost a straight cliff face. Well, where scout is, it's a little better. Um, but you know, you can okay. see the almost sheer cliff face, uh, for that stretch there in between, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so double move would be 60 feet. Yes, sir. Okay. So double move it is, and then I'll move on. Can I um, go around to the left of the cart, or am I blocked? Yeah, no, it, it's just a wagon. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure anybody in real life could easily, like, just climb over it, and you guys are great heroes. So, you know, um, the the obstacle is not, you know, so great that you can't get around it. It's just enough to like, you know, slow you down and and make you have to bunch up so that they can ambush you. Um, it is rough terrain, though, so it does cost you uh, 10 feet for every square you move over the wagon. Okay. So I don't know how this works exactly. Do I like this? To the left and over, and can I go all the way to the um, rocks? Okay, so this is 10 feet, this is 15 feet. Now you have uh, all the rest of your movement uh, you know, minus 15 feet for for this movement. Yeah, 45 at, at... feet. Then. And this is more climbable, the in front of me. Then to the right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it it is slightly more climbable there. And I'm I, I'm a, a cat, so maybe that will help. Um, can oh. I go all the way to the rocks? Yes. But I can't climb yet. That's one movement right there, and now you can try to climb. The, the cliff face with your action. Thank you. Um, so that's an athletics check. Skills, skills yep. Okay. Unfortunately, your your cat's claws are unable to give you any assistance in climbing the rocky surface and you actually like break one on the claw on on the rock and and you're like really upset about this uh i don't know if you've ever had a cat with a you know broken claw or uh after you trimmed their claws and they like they hate it they don't like it okay <laughs> i mean we do have cats yeah it, do you do you trim their claws? They 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 don't like that. All right, so I end my turn. All right, Kobold uh, number eight is not sure what's going on and begins to try to hide inside the the wagon. He's uh, not very good at it. Laura <laughs> mm. cool. so seeing that the kobold is hiding in the thing, says, so goes over to look at it, him, and says, you know you're not really good at hiding. And he says it in draconic. And he sort of just is sort of giving a, and in peace, trying to be peaceful with this goal. 
he's trembling and and looks extremely uh nervous about accepting your your offer Of course, this, it has one of the rations. Oh, you're extending one of the rations? Uh, then he does eventually reach out and grab it before retreating as far back into the wagon as he can. Nice. All right, then. That is certainly progress of some sort. I guess it is progress of some sort, yes. This kobold runs all the way off the map and is gone as far as you guys are concerned. I mean, you could run after him, but that would be a different, you know, thing altogether, mm -hmm. so. All right, so Elodie, um... I mean, at this point, Elodie's just going to hang. Uh, there's really not much for Elodie to do, I don't think. Uh, well, eventually, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Let's let's scout, try to get up the hill. Let's see if we can all get up to find Pesci. I'm, I'm sure we can, you know, we know that there's like some kobolds that are running in that direction. Can Pesci hear us? Call for him? You guys don't even know he's free. That's or here. We have no reason why he's there. Yeah. I guess you just hear a cackling up above you. Yes, you I do hear the to, laughing of the kobold. I do attempt to climb again. Yeah, and uh, if this was the easier part of the cliff, you you would be making progress. But here, where where it's it's just you know a bit more difficult than the the two easy parts, uh, though not as difficult as the hardest uh, section there. Uh, you came up just a little bit shy. All right. Um, at this point, I just want to knock this kobold out or tie him up or something. Um, oh, yeah. Well, hold on. He's still looking for you. And he just found you. I think that would be a disadvantage because he's laughing. Oh, crap. I forgot. He's... Oh. <laughs> it's right there in front of me. He's incapacitated. He ain't looking for nothing. I got all excited because I was like gonna stab you. <laughs> I, I I still want to stab you a little, you know. Just just just. Oh, I'm sure he's ha he has this feelings very deep down inside, but right now the feeling of laughter and joy and mirth of watching Pesci fall on himself with his pants down is overriding that uh however um i i am going to count that as his wisdom save so he does stop laughing now but he didn't get it until the end of his turn so uh he is he is still prone on the ground but no longer laughing or incapacitated there you go. Okay. Poor Tasha. Why does she have hideous laughter? Um, he dropped his weapon, correct? He dropped everything. Okay. Um, does he have... Uh, what weapons did he drop? A sling and a dagger. A dagger. Okay. Pesci stands up, grabs the dagger, and... Uh, I guess holds it in front of him. Um, so try to get him to stop moving. Um, and let's see. Um, you do not speak draconic, so you're going to need to roll, roll a performance in order to try to mime what it is that you want him to do. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to minor illusion, some noises of, like, footsteps and stuff, crackling leaves coming out of uh, the area where he can't see. And my performance is I'm going to act like I am waving and flagging my 
my uh, my party members over to help me finish subduing this cre this pork miserable creature. Okay. Um. So. Do you just want me to do a, what type of check would you like me to perform for that? Uh, so you just uh, roll your performance, um, click off uh, your spell slot, unless Minor Illusion is a cantrip. It's a cantrip. Yeah, then you're fine. Uh, no need to track that, so just roll your performance. Oh, uh, with a plus two to the roll. Okay. Performance plus two. Let's see if it actually applies the plus two. Um, it did. Awesome, it did. All right. Uh, the tiny kobold, um, you know, sees all of this and uh tries to run away. Okay, I'm not gonna stop him from running away. Okay. I just wanted to scare him enough to get him to like want to leave. Yeah. He he begins scrambling on all fours because he was prone and he looks a little bit like Scooby Doo because it's not his turn so he can't move yet. <laughs> I don't know if he's okay. Awesome. <laughs> he's just Scooby Dooing that... it right in front of you, trying to get away. Yeah. All right. It, that... I would have more things to add to that, but there's no one who can see me, so I'm not going to bother adding anything. <laughs> yeah. That that's the uh, new Nike ad, you know, is just Scooby do it. I know it's a terrible dad joke. Okay, we got it. I I'm I'm a dad. I'm I'm allowed to to make these jokes. Having player characters does not count as being a dad. Oh no, I I have uh two. Well, the one isn't even a teenager anymore. She's twenty two, but uh, a teenage child and a and a twenty two year old. So I'm going up here. I'm going to use the stick there, I guess, to kind of go. Can I uh, do that? Yes, no. you still need to make a uh, athletics or acrobatics check to to make it up there, though. Um, but the difficulty class is much reduced. Okay, yeah, now you can go up there. So Brian, you see um, Pesci drastically trying to grab his pants up from the ground, brandishing a dagger at this kobold who's trying to run as he's screeching all around him for uh, people to come and help him subdue this horrible, ugly beast. Also, uh, okay. al also, he uh, assures you it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. He's not. He's not. Um... Not having conjugal relations with the uh, with the uh, the dragon is what we're saying. Okay, good. I'm well, it depends on what your definition of is is, Brian. But That's yes, <laughs> it also depends um, on what you thought it looked like. But yeah. So, <laughs> all right, so I got a second move. I assume my second move could take me right up next to him, wouldn't it? I just yes, did sir. 30, 15, 15 and thirty. So I'll yeah, I'll run up there. Okay. Pesci. How you doing? All right, so Lucy's... I don't think there's much for me to do, except at this point, if... Uh... Like your wounds? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a freaking nail. Ouch, I hate it when that happens. Um, I can go back to the wagon to prepare to help flip it over. I don't know. Or just go put an arrow in the head of that kobold that Gorakul's trying to feed. Well, I don't want to undermine Gorakul. No, I, I know. It's just, you know, he's giving away precious resources. Yes, well, that's his choice. I am pretty good at scavenging stuff. Ah, that's true. Yeah, you'll, you'll be okay. I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And if this is what entertains him is to try to get out. Yeah. Scare take take home a stray kobold. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Can you can you train him? It's like uh, how to train your kobold. I mean, I've seen 
other D D groups adopt a kobold into their ranks? Well, then maybe you could try to do that, but uh, Lucy should end her turn, and we could see what kobold eight does. Maybe it'll well, chop your head off. I was thinking, should I move or should I just stay put and end my turn? End your turn. Doesn't matter at this point. Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme, but like for the purposes of what your character would actually do, you know, of I'm course. A patient cat, very patient. Yeah, so Lucy holds back and, you know, clutches her bow ready to strike should any more threats appear, but uh, she's just waiting for any indication from her party as to what they what they want to do this kobold like i said scrambles to the back of the of the wagon and is very terrified of you gorakul i'm going to try and make another persuasion well well you've all you've already succeeded as much as you're going to succeed at, at persuasion the 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 kobolds were you know willing to listen to you talk to you uh they unfortunately the rest of them are dead or gone but um this guy you know he surrendered and uh you know then heard you know more battle and so he's scared he doesn't know that you guys aren't going to kill him but you don't have to roll persuasion again because he's already persuaded that like he shouldn't be fighting. Now it just comes down to if you want to talk to him or whatever, you just got to tell me what you're saying. Yes. I sort of say, look, we're not going to kill you. We are just, we understand the battle's over. Just trust us that we are not here to kill you. I don't want him to succeed. He just want I want him to understand that we're not going to harm him. Okay. Do you think he'd tell you about his glasses and how they work? Yeah. Okay. Uh have have you ever uh done that thing with um the box for for looking at the eclipse and all of that it, it's based off of those principles you know you gonna try to adopt this thing or what are you doing here are you trying to get him to read parts or i'm gonna try and adopt you try to adopt it what Okay. It's a lone kobold. The lone right. kobold. Okay. How does how does one do that? Well, I already did one. Right? Okay. So what? So why don't you do that and be done with it, and let's move on. Yeah. Okay. So you continue to try to talk to the kobold. Yeah. I should have say, I imagine that will take the rest of my turn. Is that right, DM? What's that? That take the rest of his turn. Yes. Okay. Doggies. And uh, I, 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 I not <laughs> Gorakul says, trust me, it was more or less just a matter of a, of, a, of a mess of things, but trust us in this case, we're not going to hurt you. Kobold uh, number seven is gone. I forgot, that's why he's not showing. Elodie wants to mm -hmm. move up. Yeah, I'm going to go over here and get ready to help figure out what's going on with this uh, card here. This rock face is just proving <laughs> inclimbable for you, yeah, Scout. Yeah, and Scout is an amazing scout. He can't even climb a rock. <laughs> and and it's, really, it's really starting to upset you because normally... 
you know, you're you're very adept in the wilderness, and for some reason, this rock face is just giving you so much trouble. So much so that the rock right next to you starts to take on the appearance of a face that is smirking at you and judging your failures over and over again. Look at it. It really does. It just sounds like my workplace on a daily basis. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. But no, for real, look at that rock to you right there. It's got like a nose, two eyes, a little it's smirk on its cool. face. Yeah. All right. I try to run, which provokes an attack of opportunity from both of you. Ooh. And Paul is like just trying to do people. All right. So including me? Uh, yeah, Zarash and Pesci, you could both attack yeah, the the kobold if you wish. You really want to shoot a kobold? Um, Pesci, what do you think? Um, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, Pesci can't really like give you advice in the moment because this is a reaction, so you have to like decide to take it or not. You know. Oh sure. And these kobolds did uh, attack you, and, well, Pesci was captured by them and tied up. So, <laughs> so he's definitely can, not happy about it. I can, I can chase him down and, and, um, and go with him. No, I don't, have, I don't have a really good, um, I don't have a really good range thing. So oh, gonna, oh no, gotta... no, 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 no. Uh, you get to attack him right here as soon as, okay. as soon as he leaves your square. Okay, I got it. Okay, fine. So now I've now I've got him targeted. Okay, fine. I'm just gonna, yeah. Yeah, he didn't actually get away before you were able to attack. You got the attack in, and then he either gets away or he doesn't. Oh no, mm -hmm. he fails. Oh no, he just doesn't get reactions. He's fine. All right, so he does run. Um, do I get an attack of opportunity as well for uh, him leaving my space? Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't sure. You like you would have gotten yours first, so. I, I was letting Brian go first. Um, okay, so I guess I have a knife. Where's my dagger? Here's my dagger. Um, <laughs> I miss. You miss. He's a little bit too distracted with uh, trying to make sure his pants stop falling down. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Oh, and uh, technically I'm I'm off the map. But uh, you could catch up to me with a double move. Okay. I would be this far away. It's silent. All right, it's your turn, Pesci. There are no more. Wait, how far away is this guy from me? Sixty feet. One. One. Full... Sixty feet. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm gonna have some biting words about his immediate relatives and how oh, how they're no. ugly. Oh no. <laughs> Pesci, you could throw your dagger 60 feet. He doesn't need to because he unleashes a verbal assault that is is essentially an eight-mile battle rap diss that, that the kobold, you know, reacts to so violently that he clutches his head and screams in rage as he drops to the ground, dying. That's what I think about your rope-tying skills. All right. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Hi, Zeresh. <laughs> nice of you to join me. And, and uh, you just heard him drop, like, a, a full <laughs> verse about, like, how much this guy is terrible at tying knots and and keeping prisoners and you know that that uh he looks like a a salamander left out in the sun too long 
That is the most insulting thing you can tell Cobalt. I guess uh, that's my turn. Brian. Hold on, hold on. It, it, it's okay. We're we're pretty much out of combat. I'm only leaving it up for one more round just to, you know, make sure that I know if anybody's trying to chase any kobolds down, etc. No, not chasing anything. We're done. I'm done. We're okay. Done. All right. Then combat is over. As as you guys are now free to move about the cabin, and um. As you guys, you know, uh, begin to to assess the situation and what's all going on, um, you know, feel free to role play amongst each other. But then also, uh, if there's any interactions with the kobold, you know, we'll determine what's going on. As of right now, the kobold is huddled in the uh, front of the wagon trying to hide from uh gorakul um he snatched the little bit of of rations that gorakul was offering him and stuffed it into his pack but um otherwise is just trying to like stay down and and not engage gorakul um, have you tamed your pet or can i kill it not kill anymore, please. We're, I'm trying to be the, the sensible one here. Heshi, what happened to you? That's a very interesting question. Um, have you seen my things? Uh, which things are you talking about? I mean, your pants were down. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, as he adjusts and fixes <laughs> everything up. Um, no, but rather my pack with items, they kind of came on unexpected and, well, tied me up over here by this tree. Um, I got out, obviously, but uh, your help is, do is much appreciated. It's good to see you again. We should go down and join the others. Yes, but first, my things. Uh, DM, do I see where they were keeping um, roll, my roll, pack? Roll for perception. Rolling for perception. Here it is. And DM, I'm going to go ahead and search the Cobalt's bodies. Yes. See what cool things I can get. No, 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 19. Pesci, you see that the winged Cobalt had uh, your uh, pack and items on him. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, oh, there it is over there. Uh, let me fetch that really quick. Um. Do you want to see if that other kobold that uh, couldn't take my my sick beats over there um, is carrying anything, Zeresh? Yes, and so now, uh, Pesci, you roll investigate for the winged kobold. Uh, Zaresh, if you agree to go check that out, you roll investigation for that other kobold over there. And then Scout, you go ahead and roll investigation for uh, the kobolds down by you guys. Um... I want to also cast uh, Detect Magic. Yes. So I will cast that on myself. Let me select myself. And I will use my spell slot. So I'm also, I'm also going to be looking around. Okay. I'm down by the cart and everything, too, to see yep. if there's anything. So Let's yep. see... I rolled terribly. You didn't roll terribly. It's about average. But uh, here's what you guys all find. I'm just going to do this in order. Zeresh. Yeah? You find on that kobold a kobold-sized dagger, a kobold-sized sling, and a bunch of rocks, a pouch containing 17 copper pieces, and a small pewter figurine of a dragon, and a letter written in kobold. Well, draconic. Huh. Okay. Koboldian uh, draconic. Obviously, I want to take this down to Gorakul. 
Because I don't speak Draconic, do I? No. I do not think so. So I have to add that to my inventory. I have to add how many gold pieces? I mean, 17, many copper pieces? Co 17 copper pieces. A small pewter figure of a dragon. Okay. And a letter written in Koboldian Draconic. Hmm. All right. Next up, Scout. As you examine the other kobolds, you find, I think there was three, four down there that uh, you guys, five, five. Um, you, you find five daggers, five slings, a pile of small rocks, 103 copper pieces, two small uh, gems of, of low, you know, value, but you know, still, still gems of some kind, uh, quartz, maybe, you know, um, some kind of, uh, uh, turquoise or, or something, you know, else not extremely expensive, but, um, you know, it's, it's still two small gems, something you'll have to appraise them to find out, you know, exactly how much they're worth. Uh, and then, uh, there is a ring carved out of bone and um, one of them had a pair of leather boots on and um, finally Pesci as you are examining the the winged kobold you find your backpack and all of your stuff plus some of the treasures that he has accumulated over his time as leader of these kobolds uh amongst these treasures is an amulet this amulet glows with with a magical aura hmm Awesome. Uh, can I tell what school this aura is from? Because I uh, believe Detect Magic can do that. Uh, it, only on the second round. And, uh, what, one, round one round reveals the presence of it, and then if you concentrate on it for another round, uh, uh, it, it uh, reveals the aura. I think that's the way that works. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn its school of magic, if any. Oh, okay. For so the you duration, you can sense. Okay, okay. I thought you had to concentrate on it to get that. Um, anyway, uh, the school would be... I got 10 minutes. I'm sure that I can do all this and examine oh, all the other oh, items oh, and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That wasn't the problem. I just... Um, the school would be, uh, protection, so transmutation? I, th I think transmutation is the, is the right one. Okay. Or, or, or it's, it, it's conjuration. It's either conjuration or transmutation. I'm, I'm not sure which. It's, it's protective magic. Okay, cool. And, and and then uh you also find um a a uh pair of crudely made wings um designed for a small creature and uh there there's no magical aura okay a and uh as you turn to look uh, towards Zerash, you see that his sword is glowing, and um, the rest of the treasure that you find is uh, seven gold pieces and a uh, hundred and two silver pieces, uh, as well as three gems of uh, low to moderate value. Um, nothing uh like diamonds or anything like that but uh okay. you know per perhaps uh a bit of jade or something you know worth a little bit more okay cool 
Um, you're rich. You're rich. I'm. It's not. I'm going to be splitting this. So. <laughs> Um, okay, we're rich. We're rich. Uh, Zarish, uh, I noticed your your sword is um. I didn't notice your sword before. It looks quite unique. It's magical. Yes, I feel its magic coursing through my veins every time I cut off the head of a creature. Disturbing. Like... All right, let's rejoin everyone else. <laughs> as I gather up the remaining items. Okay, I'm thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here now. <laughs> Go over here. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go down. Yeah, down so to a burning whatever, ring of fire. I'm, I'm definitely gonna do a once over of this entire area that we were in. Gather up whatever spare rope I can gather up, and return the party in general. And also, since I have detect magic out and whatnot. Also mentioned to Scout that um, at this time I am able to perceive any magical aura. Um, so if you have anything you're interested in, um, let me see and I can tell you more. Hmm. Okay. I would show you, but you were found with your pants down. That's worrisome for me to show you my magic. Well, well I don't have my pants down before I came down, so you don't know that. Only Zarash has seen this. <laughs> I'm not talking. It's up to him to share that information or I'm not. not talking. <laughs> is that part of your bardic immunity? <laughs> that is bardic immunity. What stays up up there by the tree, what happens up there stays up there. Up there. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. What happens in Draconic stays in Draconic. All right. So oh. I have this letter, Gorkul. I have this letter. I need you to look at it. It's written in Draconic. After I clean up the items using druid craft to sort of like mist off the blood and give yes. them to, to the kobold as a gift, I sort of take a look at the at the letter. The letter is a love letter to a a uh, female of of you know some kind. You assume a kobold. He sort, of, he sort of grimaces as he looks at the at the letter and says, and looks to Goraku and says, "This is a love letter." Okay, it's a shame that person will never see their love again. That that person, that that whatever it is, that thing. Yeah, uh, I, just, I, I I like I like I like how uh, you know Zarash being a bugbear you know, understands that he's already, like, a second-class humanoid, you know, compared to the dominant humans and all of that, so he makes sure to classify that, like, hey, I'm still a humanoid, that thing was not. That's why, that's why it must die. Or a cool just sort of rolls his eyes. Sometimes I just don't get folks like you. Well, I'm pretty straightforward. I'm a big bugbear who loves killing things. What can I say? So, at which point... Once, once again, Pesci takes a step back. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> Wait, are you still right in this position, Zarash? Yeah. Um, no, I'm down, I'm, down by the, um, I'm down by the thing now, right? R no, yeah, I mean, are that, you yeah, here that, at this yeah, location? That's where he is, yes. Okay. At which point, uh, Pesci walks by Garakul... Uh, takes a look inside the cart with his uh, his eyes of magical detection and sees if he can see any aura or anything on any anything here. Uh, no, nothing here. But as you were uh, looking past Scout, you noticed uh, something. Uh, I focus my attention past Scout. He has a uh, small circular object that is glowing magical in his pouch um okay but it's it's obvious not to pass sense. up a chance to act uh, dramatic because zarash is uh Garkul just translated his uh letter of the love letter and now zarash has said that he is now missing out on whatever love he is there uh pesci Snatches the love letter from Garakul and says, 
Oh, the humanity. This poor, miserable creature will never know the love of his other or her other poor, miserable creature ever again as he falls to his knees and throws his thrusts his hands up in the air and shouts, No! Or a fool just looks at him in just like confusion and amusement as this sort of thing happens. And he says, remember to himself, I shall never understand the artistic. Hmm. However, as as Pesci is giving this monologue, uh, go ahead and roll a uh, performance check because... Well, I'll I'll let you know after you roll. Oh be- wow! Okay, be- <laughs> because he pulls. Oh my gosh! I'm crying. I'm yeah. crying, and I'm a bugbear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He pulls some some deep, you know, uh, metaphorical meaning, you know, from from this love letter and and this guy's lost love, and it becomes. Uh, almost like one of the bards, you know, plays where where he tells this whole story of these two lovers who shall never again embrace each other, and um, it, it actually wraps up like a a uh, you know tearjerker of a of a movie, um, and, and just all of you are experiencing some kind of emotion so much so that everybody gets another point of inspiration. Oh, wow. You're inspired. <clears throat> the, the bard has inspired everybody, including himself. So, so much so that, that you guys feel, uh, like you have a new, um, you know, purpose and and renewed vigor for for wanting to go forth and and be heroes and you know do heroic stuff and uh, smash some more kobolds in the face or maybe be a little bit nicer to them. Each of you takes it the way that you that you say that your characters take it. You know, um, so so you know certainly don't feel obligated to to be a little bit nicer to them. But you know, some of you may have taken it that way. Some of you have just uh, may have taken it as you have to live for the moment and, and protect yourself even more, uh, you know, and make sure that you are not the one who never gets to do or see uh, what you love, you know, ever again. So, you know, certainly there's no obligation to be like, oh, I feel like being nicer to kobolds because of this story. You could just feel like, oh, I feel like not dying like that kobold did, you know. So uh, however you say your characters take it, that's how you take it. But uh, it elicits some sort of emotion in all of you. So um, let's just go ahead and go from left to right across the uh, top there. Um, Pesci, how does the telling of this story make you feel? Uh, well, I feel all of a sudden attached to the arts as I am describing this massive, uh, or not, this missive and lost love. Just like how the lost love between Romeo and Juliet, between Anastasia and Christian Grey and uh, Hobbes and Shaw, the epic stories of love lost between two parties. Yes, indeed. And all still a better love story than Twilight. And so <laughs> as, as uh, you know, you, you feel the, the spirits of these great bards of the past, you know, flowing through you, um, you, you feel the connection to the arts even more so to the point where like, you might start, uh, you know, Shia LaBuffing it for for a bit. Oh, nice! I actually did have the Twilight um, uh, character list up in front of me, but I chose not to mention the characters from that. Yeah, which is which is good because I would have had to have kicked you from the game. No, I'm, I'm kidding about that. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, 
we understand biases here among the DMs, uh, you know, cultural reference points. We understand. First, yes, we yes. We don't know Twilight like this family, so it's fine by me. Say. Yeah, hey, hey, I've I've never claimed to be unbiased, so <laughs> I I own my biases. <laughs> Yes, well, nothing can be quite as epic as the love story between Hobbs and Shaw <laughs> yes, and the cars that. that they drive. I was yeah. going to say, I'm pretty sure they're more in love with the cars, but... You well, know, you never know. They're a metaphor for other things. They love cars like Michael Bay loves explosions. Yes. So, uh, Lucy... Oh, hold on, hold on. Le left to right. So, next up, Lucy. How did the story of the lost loves inspire you so I begin to purr loudly and think of my family that I've left long ago it has been a long time since you have longed for the comforts of cuddling up with your litter mates uh, and you know nesting in in your in your kitten area with with the rest of your siblings uh the the joy that you would feel as your as your mother would lay down with all of you um being an adult tabaxi you have not thought of or longed for for that feeling in a very very long time a creature of solitude and and self-assuredness uh you you haven't needed that feeling but somehow this gnome's words have touched you in, in a way that you know awakens those feelings from long ago and you can remember the exact pattern on the fur and the exact rhythm of the purrs of all of your litter mates as he describes this and for one brief moment, you get that little cat tear that forms in your eye. Do you wipe it away or let it fall? I let it fall. Zarash, how does the bard's story inspire you? Well, uh, you know, maybe I'll let Gorkul keep this little uh, this little thing here instead of just killing it. <laughs> yeah, you 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 have not come around to deciding that every kobold is worth sparing, but in this moment, seeing this pathetic creature and hearing the bard's words, the Grinch's heart grew three sizes, and he was able to feel what the what the you know softer humanoids call compassion. Well, I gotta say, Gorkul, you better take this thing out for a walk, and you better clean up its poop, because I don't want to deal with it. And obviously, Elodie isn't here, so we'll let, uh, you know, that slide. Scout, how did the the bard's words affect the metal warforged's cold heart? Well, seeing how he doesn't quite understand this concept of love, however, it did arouse an inspiration and a recognizing that there are more of them and they probably have the rest of the belongings of this cart and now he's inspired to find their hideout to return the belongings back yeah so like a a ai um scout has quickly come to the most logical and optimal um you know conclusion to all of this which is these things have our stuff <laughs> and so therefore uh you you have determined that keeping this one alive and figuring out where uh the others have run off to is probably going to be the most profitable and beneficial course of action that you guys could take it did did that about sum it up? That is pretty much exactly where his ruthless brain is. All right. And so, Gorakul, we come to you now. 
I know you've been thinking about this, so tell us. How has the Dragonborn been affected by the gnome's words? Honestly, he's usually annoyed by the gnome, but seeing the words that how he has, uh, how he craft, well crafted a uh, way of like, of his performance, and he can't help but be impressed. But it also sort of inspires him to also understand that that war is not the only path. And understand that the stars are plentiful as the options. All right. So, uh, Gorakul, you know, has already felt compassion for the kobolds. And instead of, you know, feeling anything more from from the words towards the kobolds, instead, he looks at Pesci and sort of gives him a little nod of approval that he has never given him before on any of his performances. He He has always you know, almost been short and curt with, with Pesci and, you know, been like, will you please go practice your soliloquies somewhere else so that I can finish studying? And, and you know, just all of that. And and this time you had his, his rapt attention, Pesci, as Gorakul listened to every word that you had to say and, and finally, um, you know, what was like giving you some approval. Pesci doesn't know how to take the fact that everyone actually enjoyed his work, and he kind of stumbles a bit and says, uh, well, yes, I guess every now and then the arts do speak for themselves, as he kind of gets up, brushes himself off, and then walks over to Scout and says... What's that you got you in your pocket? Is that a magical ring in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I guess Scout's trying to figure out which pocket he's talking about. So uh, Scout he pointed right control. towards it. Uh, do, don't you have a pouch or something? He does have pouches attached to his, his yeah. body. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I assumed that you would have slipped the ring into there since you didn't say that you gave it to uh to uh right. Gorakul there, so Correct. I still have the uh the cobalt bone ring, yes. Yeah. So wherever so, wherever you have that on your body is where he, Pesci is, you know, referring he to. Pulls it out and shows it to Pesci. Um Pesci studies it and tries to discern what aura it has. Yeah. <clears throat> it it has a faint aura of necromancy. Ooh. Well, hey, necromancy covers a lot of things. I know. Speak with dead. Uh, so, DM question. Yes. Can I, since I now can detect the uh, the auras and whatnot, could I also potentially make an Arcana check to discover what it is? Uh, so you can make an arcana check to, like, know about, like, um, important, uh, like, legendary items and stuff like that, but arcana does not replace identify for, like, identifying, uh, regular magic items. What I do allow for, though, is if you have, uh, time and a setup, you can make an arcana check in order to identify something, um, but it requires like a series of tests and everything um, with with like various uh, regions and alchemical okay. agents and stuff like that. So basically, at the end of the day, uh, what I'm saying is that out here in the open, uh, no. Okay. Um, but more importantly, I was just trying to determine whether or not this is cursed. Right, and again, that would uh, that would uh, you know require you to at least have a setup or identify. 
Okay. Understood. So I then say to Scout that, um, yes, whatever that is, is glowing with a little bit of a necromantic, uh, uh, aura of necrom- uh, necromancy. Just for you to know. I don't know what it is, though. I As appreciate he that. Spins and turns back around, back towards the carriage. So, Gorakul, can you ask your pet where the animal that draws this carriage and the, the equipment and supplies went? DM, do I recall anything about um, what exactly happened, the events leading up to this? So I had to maybe relay that back to the party. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, basically, uh, you guys um, were traveling. The kobolds attacked. They managed to, um, you know, block you in so you couldn't, like, just run away. The the mule was unable to pull the wagon because there was, you know, rocks in the way. And, and so as they attacked, they quickly overwhelmed, you know, the NPCs. And uh, Katla ran to go and and find the rest of the party and get help while you stayed behind and tried to to save the npcs when when you woke up the npcs uh were were um being dragged off and you were tied up and left with the group that stayed behind okay so I relay this information. Um, sir, looks to the uh, the kobold and sort of speaks in draconic. Okay. <clears throat> what do you say? What do you say? I'm typing it out. Oh, you don't have to type it. You can just talk. Sorry, just... I, I, I only use that language feature, like, in the middle of battles, like, when I'm saying something in case you want to reveal it or not. For now, I'll just talk back to you, and, and if it's something that, like, you don't want to, you know, relay to the party or whatever, you can be like, oh, I don't tell him he said that. Um, but otherwise, you know, it, at, at, out, outside of combat like this, we can just talk. So, Gorafu sort of tells the kobolds, well... My friends say there were some other humanoids alongside the gnome. Uh, mind telling me what exactly is the where exactly those three humanoids are? No, you kill. I understand that I kill. I I'm trying to I'm trying to sort of. I'm trying to apologize for doing that because we were in a difficult situation and all that stuff, and we were worried for our friends, and I'm very sorry for all that mess. <laughs> he he, appe- he appear he appears terribly uh you know frightened and and is sure that you guys are just gonna kill him. Yeah, he's translating all this stuff to us, right? Goraku, go ahead and answer yeah. that. Goraku sort of says again. Oh, hold on. He wants to know is this being translated to them? Yeah, this is being translated. Okay. Um, if I may, um, Goraku, would you tell him that uh, you see you kind of forced our hand here a little bit and made us do this. You know, if you, uh, if, if you don't give us reason to make us do this again, to the rest of your friends and return and help us return our, uh, our remaining, um, 
party members here that were helping us, then we have no reason to do this again. We can, you know, move on with our lives and everyone will be happy. And I give you a bardic inspiration to do so, uh, Garakul. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so yeah. now, now that you have bardic inspiration, go ahead and uh, roll your your uh, persuasion plus one d six. So um, hold on one second. Um, no, no, one second, one second. Oops, uh... Sorry about this. I get. I, I gotta make sure that I have this worded correctly. For some reason, I only have one use of party inspiration when I should. Oh, never mind. That's because it's a different feature for some reason. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, I found the other. So there's a, it's under feature, but it's also under class abilities. So yeah, yeah, yeah. For a moment. Yeah, yeah. You wanna you wanna use the the class the class ability. ability. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay. So for this one, I am going to want skill. Got it. Okay, you are good to go. Please roll your uh, persuasion. Okay, so once again, you are extremely charismatic and persuasive as you attempt to convince the kobold that if he just shows you guys, you know, where where he lives, you know, so that you can get your stuff back and rescue your friends that, you know, you're not going to hurt him or anybody else that you don't have to. And he <clears throat> reluctantly uh, accepts that, um, you know, he'll, he'll show you the place. But he says, uh, you know, uh, kobold home uh, very far, uh, many days. Um, yeah, pretty distance. Yeah, can I um tell if he is lying? You can't or misleading. You can't understand what he's saying. But I can understand his body language, can't I? Um, not not really, because uh, he he's he's a uh, a draconic. He's okay. He, he he's he's not a humanoid. Uh, you know, he he has dragon features. Uh, he's he's almost alien to you. Um, the same the same with uh, Gorakul. Like when Gorakul is doing stuff, he does not hold himself in the ways that other humanoids do. He has you know dragon like qualities to him that make him very strange. The same as Lucy has cat-like qualities that make her very different from other humanoids. She takes more naps, gets a little more um, um, feisty, like uppity, doesn't like being touched. You know, just there's all kinds of cat-like qualities to um, Lucy that make her strange. Uh, Scout has has very, you know, robotic AI kind of, you know, reactions and, and all of that. Um, so, so you know, uh, only really Zarosh and Elodie can you, like, you know, identify with 
on a on a humanoid level to the point where you would be able to just like read their body language like that. Everybody else is pretty foreign to you. So so can I then actually uh, get a sense of those lying or not? Uh, uh, well, Gorokul can because okay. because he not only speaks he not only well, speaks the language but also is the same type of humanoid. Gotcha. So yeah. Gorokul having rolled insight. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Gorokul, um, you get the sense that he's, he's trying to pull some, some, uh, you know, Smeagol golem stuff here, like, you know, lead you up into Shelob's cave and then, you know, take the, uh, ring for himself, which like, I don't know how that was supposed to work. Like Shelob would kill him too, but whatever. Yeah. Gorokul says, he says, says, no, it's not very nice to lie. Me never lie. Well, you're lying right now. Um, at which point, um, Pesci makes a grand gesture to to wave Zaresh over, and uh, he he exa- uh, um, exaggerates his uh, his motions and everything as he tells Zaresh, uh, "This one is giving us reason to." Um, to uh, make us do something that you like doing, as he kind of nudges Gar cool to translate. Do that. I pull a sword out. I pull out my my long sword and I kind of just hold it. You know, I've got it leaning against my side, not in a threatening way. Just just pulling it out, making sure it's seen. And then I say to to him. Um, we do know that it hasn't been very long since you knocked this over and uh, did a very poor job of tying me up. So they're not that far ahead of us. So wherever it is, we can get there within no time. So stop lying. And so Gorakul, you would have to translate that. But uh, basically what it comes down to is an intimidation role with advantage because Zarash is, of course, extremely intimidating. Okay, so that's my roll? No, no, no. Uh, Gorokul has to roll the Intimidate. Uh, you Well, actually, you do need to roll Intimidate. Technically, you just have to get above a 10. Let's see. Not good. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, Pesci, you go ahead and roll to try and give him advantage. Roll Intimidate. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. So, I too rolled a four. <laughs> so uh, scratch that part where I said you get advantage. Oh my. <laughs> so uh, basically, um, what it comes down to is uh, the kobold insists that he's not lying. And here's the deal. If you don't know where it is, then, like, you can be as sure as you want to be that this guy's lying, but in effect, you have no way of knowing that at all. He could be lying, he could be telling the truth, and, like, unless you have definitive proof that he's lying, like... You kind of have to take him at his word. I have an idea. Um, Pesci goes around outside over to Lucy and Scout and waves him closer and says, I'm sure that all the people and things that were pulled away from this cart probably made a whole lot of tracks and everything. Um, Why don't you two find where these tracks are going in the direction? Meanwhile... We'll see what what direction this guy is pointing us in and make sure they, they line up. How about that? Sounds good to me. Very good with tracks, but I will give it a try. Um, but don't say anything if you find any. Well, we want to I want to get him caught in this. Wait, isn't your name and job scout? What do you Why mean you're... For bad people finding tracks is a whole other thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Appar apparently the scout is is only good at a certain type of scouting. So uh, he fails to find the trail. I, I failed to be a ranger, so... Lucy, do you can you find any anything as we as Garkul uh, allows this thing to uh, point out where things are? Wow, we are not rolling well right now at all. They they like their fours. I think the fates are stacked against us. Um, I too will also look around to see if I can find them. Can I do that? You can, but at this point, it's at disadvantage as everybody's moving around and, like, possibly covering up the tracks as they, like, just oblivi obliviously miss them. You still manage to find them. Okay. So, cool. the forest gnome used to working in the Fey Wild, uh, well, not the Fey, uh, let me, let me rephrase that used to working in places touched by the fey wild he is you know more adept at looking at the undergrowth and you know other uh less obvious more subtle signs of tracks than simply footprints you know you guys are are just looking for footprints he's looking for maybe a broken twig or you know a bent branch or you know just anything that would indicate that something had moved through the area and so pesci you know finally with your companions all stomping around unable to locate the trail uh you manage to pick it up and figure out you know where it leads well not okay. i mean not the whole way but like you know you you've got you've got the direction all right uh at which point garco i'm sure you're trying to get more information from him um at some point pesci will show back up and uh nod for garco to have him show us the direction to quote unquote the hideout he begins leading you in that direction is it the correct direction? Uh, that direction, yes. Okay. So I point out to Lucy and Scout um, the tracks that I found uh, quietly so that this guy doesn't see that. And I mention um, just make sure that he's pointing, keeping us in the right direction as we go and try to find the rest of, the, uh, of our troop. Okay, so two things happen here. First, you have to roll survival in order to continue following the trail because you were able to find the direction, but that doesn't give you the whole path. So you have to roll survival again to make sure that you know that you're on the right path. It's no longer disadvantage. Okay. Uh, can I have Lucy and Scout assist in this or can I assist Lucy or Scout because I pointed this out to them like where it is? Uh... Lucy can can assist you, or you can assist Lucy. So, so I will go over to be Lucy because Lucy has had to go, which and we're we're gonna hit a wall here ourselves, schedule wise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, what do I need to do for Lucy here? I'm survival. rolling survival. Yeah, you're just rolling. You're just rolling survival. Got it. Okay. All right. So you guys know which direction it is. Uh However, the kobold does indeed start to veer off from the trail. And rather uh, than dealing with the whole situation, I'm just going to get your quick reaction to how uh, you guys react to that. And then we'll wrap up so that you guys can get going. Uh, since I'm still, I'm still basking in the glow of that tremendous performance, I'm going to let the kobold go his merry way. Um. I uh I think we should um at this point we need to bound and gag him if we want to keep him alive or kill him one of those two. Well, depending on how far off the trail, I mean, 
Carrying, he's trying to, he's trying to lead you guys. Him. He's he's like, follow me this way over here. But you guys, you guys can tell that's the, like the trail goes over this way. That's not that's not where everybody else went. Yeah, because all I'm saying is if they're carrying and dragging equipment, it might they might take a different route than what they would normally just walk. Yeah, but however, if it's a drastic means... change off of the path, then we just need to follow the drag marks. This is a drastic change in the path, isn't it, DM? Uh, you know, I mean, he he's veered. You, it's not like he just all of a sudden turned around and started walking the opposite direction. Like he he turned. So, you know, is it a drastic change? I mean, you know, how far does it have to be to be drastic? Um, I would say if it takes us off this trail and doesn't parallel it then it is drastic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to tell, you know, uh, like you guys have all seen maps of roads and everything. There's all kinds of roads that like, you know, they veer off a little bit and then run parallel and then meet back up, you know, so like it's possible that it's like that. It's also possible that it veers off a little bit and then turns even more drastically and leads completely elsewhere. So as of right now, he's veered off by about, 30 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees. Okay. Um, that's enough for me. These guys bound me up and everything. I gave him a chance and he, he obviously is not, does not care at all about our well being. So I think um, following the known is much better than the possibility of this unknown. Um, it's a good point. I don't think that it is good to let him continue on. He is obviously going to, at the very least, uh, try to get, make noise or whatever um i would say if we can um make sure he can't make any noise because then if he does then he may be able to alert alert those ahead of us and i also would like to make it um hard for him to get away as well if someone can yeah yeah absolutely so as you go to grab him he starts screaming Um, going to try and calm him down. Saying, okay, I'm 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 sick of this. Let's just kill this thing. <laughs> oh, you're starting to speak my language. Calm down. We are just. He's lying to us. He's leading us in the wrong direction. Yeah, he's at this point. Um, Teshi points out that is the direction he wants us to go. This is the direction that they drag our party members. That's not... He, he's looking to lead us into a trap. We're off the trail of everything He's else, just uh, screaming Gorakul. as loud as he can. Uh, and Gorakul, what he's screaming is, Help! Help! The bigs are here! Come quick! Help! Yeah, so let's knock him out. I'll, I'll, I'll be nice and say, uh, Don't try to kill him, just knock him out. Quiet him. Sure, and and okay. that's easy enough to do. So easy, in fact, that you guys don't even have to roll for it. Zarash, you take the hilt, the pommel of your massive sword, and smash it against the kobold's face, and, and uh, he's not quite knocked out, so you smile knowing that you get to do it again, and so you hit him even harder, and he drops to the ground, Bleeding a little bit from from the side of his mouth where you punched him, uh, and and snoring unconsciously, you guys tie him up and uh, you know are preparing to continue walking uh, down down the um, trail. As you do so, uh, suddenly you you see why he turned you off of the off of the path here the kobolds had set traps along the way and um you know they know how to they they know they know how to disable them but rather than show you the trap he was going to lead you around it and so you guys walk right into an arrow trap that uh, launches a bunch of tiny 
arrows laced with sleeping poison at you guys. Everybody has to roll a dexterity save, and then I will let you know uh, who's awake and who's asleep, and we will end the session. Hmm. Dexterity is on the front there. Yeah. Dexterity under strength saves. Save saves. Ooh, I'm in great shape. No, oh, Elodie's in great shape. Everybody's rolling well here. Let's see. DM. Yes, sir. Warforged resilience. Yes. Now it says I can't be put magically to sleep. Correct. But I don't sleep, so this are, isn't magic. Are, are you a, are, are, are you immune to poison? Yes. Then you're immune oh, to no, you're... no. I have resistance too. I can have advantage. Ah, on oh, okay, okay. Uh, so so you get hit with the arrow. Uh, if you if you fail your dexterity save. Um, but then you will have advantage on your constitution check. So far, uh, Gorakul, you're the only one rolling constitution. <laughs> and no, and Scout. One. Okay, so uh, Scout, you have advantage. Gorakul, you're rolling normal. Constitution saves. Perfect. All right. Yep. You both you both managed to resist the effects. Uh, Gorakul, you you feel like a little bit like woozy. Like um, I don't know if you've ever gotten the uh, anesthesia from uh, the dentist or doctor or anything like that. Um, you know, you 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 feel you feel a little bit like woozy. You're like, oh wow, maybe you should drive. But uh, otherwise, you're okay. And uh, Scout like the arrow hits you and like you you can tell that like there's poison that was on it um but you know you you also know that like poison doesn't really affect you so you're like ha, stupid kobolds and, and i imagine we have our kobold uh captive sort of tied to uh to the to the back of uh of uh, Zerash. Yep, yeah. Zerium. Yes, you can you can hear him laugh slightly uh as, as the as the arrow trap uh goes off, but uh all of you made it okay and so, you know, he quickly shuts his his kobold mouth. And with that, as you guys continue along the path to find your lost miners, we draw to a close for this session of Dragons of War. I want to thank you guys for playing. I want to thank anyone who's watching. And as always, everyone, good gaming. Hey.